Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to wherever you are in the world. My name is Andrew Glazer, and today we're going to learn how to find the x-intercepts of the following function. f of x equals x cubed plus 6x squared minus 7x. So the first step is that we have to, first of all, understand what in the world is an x-intercept. Okay, so let's say you have this particular function. And this function, I do not uh, pretend that this will uh, be what this function will look like. I'm just make, giving you an example. So let's highlight these points right here, because these points represent the x-intercepts. Now remember the horizontal axis is always the x-axis, the vertical axis is always the y-axis, or sometimes known as just the function's value, okay, or f of x. Now you can think about it as f of x or y, it really doesn't matter. Now, we have to find the coordinates, the x-coordinates of these points. Now it turns out that we don't know them at the moment, okay, but we do know something that these three points do have in common. Do you know what that is? What do those three points there have in common? They have a common y value, right? They have a common f of x value. In other words, this point is some negative x value. I don't know what it is. I mean, it's to the left though of the x, of the, excuse me, uh, y axis there. So I know it's some negative x value. I don't know it, right? But what I do know is I do know that the y value there is zero. Similarly, with this point, right? I do not know the x value, but I know the y. It's same thing here. I don't know the x, but I do know the y. In other words, whenever you're trying to solve for an x-intercept, you will always know that the y value or the function's value will equal zero. Now that is an important thing in helping us solve the problem. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna plug in zero here for f of x, okay? Now. Let's rewrite the function. So x cubed plus 6x squared minus 7x. Now, let's just do a little thinking. Instead of thinking about, oh my goodness, now where do I go? What algebra do I do? Nah, nah, just, just relax, take a step back, and just think about this. Okay. In order for this right-hand side to equal 0, because right, that's what this mathematical statement says, what is a possible value for x? Just think about it. Just take a look and just think about it. What do you think? What does x have to be there on the right-hand side so the whole right-hand side goes to zero? Right, zero. If x were only zero, then I know that these holes, this whole side uh, would be equal to zero. Okay? So you actually found the next intercept. So this function, guess what? It's going through the origin because when the y value is zero, the x value will also be zero. Okay? So like I said, this thing didn't necessarily approximate. It's almost like as if I were to move this point now with a graph. If the function were to, it's going to go through, it's going to go through that particular origin, okay? It was just an example on that one over there. But So we already know a value. We know that one of the x-intercepts should be zero just by thinking about it. Isn't that kind of cool? But now you might say, well, that's all I can see, right? Now, I would agree with you. That's all we can see at the moment, but there might be some hidden, some hidden x values, okay? And my job right now is to figure out how to illuminate them for you to see. Now, one method of illuminating those hidden x values is to factor, okay, is to factor this side. Now, how do you factor? Well, what you gotta do is you gotta find some terms that are in common amongst all three of those items, right? I notice that I have a common x in each. So you can factor it out, pull it on out, right? So x now multiplied by, you have to reduce each of these terms by x, right? So this becomes x squared plus then 6x minus 7. Cool. This is still a true mathematical statement. It is the same thing as this. I'm just factoring out that x. Now, think about this for two seconds, okay? What's possible values of x now, right, in which this would equal 0, in which this right-hand side would equal 0? Well, take a look. If this term could only equal zero, right? if I could get this x to be zero, in other words, if x is zero, I don't care what number is inside of this when x is zero. Actually, when x is zero, right, what's this whole inside parenthesis going to be? It's going to be negative seven, right? But guess what? What is zero times negative seven? It's still zippo, zero. So that's what I mean when I say, I do not care what's in here. I don't care what number's in there. It, it ain't gonna matter. 
okay? So I know that if this term could be zero, then this whole right side's going to zero. But that's what we, so x can be equal to zero, right? We would set that up like saying this, x equals zero. Okay, we actually already found that, okay? We already said what that is, right? Just logically thinking about it. S secondly now, imagine if what's ever inside the parentheses were equal to, now to zero. If I could somehow have this content inside the parentheses equal zero, do I really care what this number will be? No, I, I don't, right? I don't care because if this thing is gonna be zero, zero times anything, who cares what this is, is gonna be zero. So how do we write that down mathematically? Well, now we write that down x squared plus six x minus seven equals zero. Now we might start to see some patterns here, right? I mean, we already know that x is gonna be equal to zero. That's one of the values of x that makes the function zero. We already said that, okay, in two ways, logically and then algebraically here. But now this one, right? What does this look like to you? Math is all about pattern recognition. Does this look like something special? Doesn't that look like a quadratic? Right, and how do you solve quadratic equations? Well, first thing, you gotta set the thing equal to zero. We already did. So what's next? The next thing is to figure out two numbers that multiply to negative seven, you gotta figure out two numbers that multiply to negative seven, but yet add to positive six. Do you know what they are? So two numbers that multiply to negative seven, but then add then to positive six. What are they? Did you say a positive seven and a negative one? Then you're correct. Now, all we gotta do, we make binomials out of this. Just plug in your x now there, okay? These are known as factors. In other words, we factored this on out, okay? We factored it into two binomials now. So if you were to FOIL this, what you would do, you know, when you do the outer, or no, FOIL first outer, whatever, whatever the acronym stands for. Whenever you do the math here to go backwards, okay, which we have videos on. I'm not going to waste too much time here. Um, it will give you this original function. Now, I was going to ask you if there are any questions, but... Uh, you can answer, but I, I, I won't hear you. So um, I'll assume there's no questions at the moment, and I'll just proceed. Now, we can use the same logic as we did over here. In other words, if only this term here could go to zero, then I know that zero times whatever the heck this is, I could care less what it is, but zero times question mark, guess what is going to equal zero, right? So if I can only get this term inside of this parenthesis to be equal to zero, well then... I can solve it, right? If only this thing could be zero. And how about this? Same thing, same exact logic. If only what's ever inside that parenthesis could be zero, then I'm good. Now, let me just ask you a question, forget about the algebra. What does X have to be in here to, for this whole term to become zero? Did you say negative seven? I think I heard you say that. No, 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 you didn't say positive seven. No, 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 you said negative seven, exactly. Right, that would be correct. And how about this? What does x have to be in here for this whole term to go to zero? Did you say one? Exactly, you got the answers, right? Those are the x values, x is negative seven, x is positive one. But watch, what you can do here is you can set up the math for yourself. You can say that x plus seven, somehow I want that term to go to zero, okay? So in other words, if you notice, I'm kind of breaking this up in little parts, right? And then I want to do x minus 1 is equal to 0. Solve this for x minus the 7 on both sides. Great, x is equal to negative 7, although that looks like a 1. That's really a 7. Add the 1 on both sides. What am I doing? I'm not really sure. x is my first time using. Uh, first time writing numbers, actually. So here, these are the values you said. And guess what? Those are the additional hidden x values. That will make this function go to 0. You can test it now. Plug in the numbers. Plug in all three x's you get. Guess what's going to happen, ladies and gentlemen? It's going to 0. Okay, it's going to go to zero. It's going to zero. So x is equal to one. X is equal to negative seven. Now, what's a quick way we could also check ourselves here, right? Let's say you get down to the quadratic, okay? And you're like, oh man, I got to do the quadratic or something. I got to factor. Look, you can use the calculator, right? So watch, go to program. By the way, if you don't have this quadratic program in your calculator, check in a uh, link in the description below. I'm going to leave you a link to literally it take you four minutes to program this, this uh, program into your calculator, you're gonna love it, okay? So watch, my A value. When you go back to here, your A is gonna be one, your B is positive six, and your C is negative seven. So watch, A is positive one, enter. B, 
6, enter. C, negative, don't hit the minus sign. 7, negative 7, hit enter. omg -ness. X is going to equal 1 and X is going to equal negative 7. We already said that down here, okay? Check out that link. Now, that's it. These are the x-intercepts, okay? This is it, ladies and gentlemen. But if you wanted to view it visually and you're like, man, you know, I get it. it, it this all makes sense. I, I'm, I get what you're saying, but, you know, I still don't really get it because I, I, I don't see it. Well, graph it. Go to, your, go to your y equals, then hit x cubed, so x raised to the 3. Hit the over button to bring the cursor down. Plus now 6x squared. Okay, I'm plugging in the original function up here, by the way. Minus then 7x now, make sure you're good. After you check it, graph it. Now, this is what it looks like, okay? I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Let's see. I'm going to go to zoom three for, to zoom out, and hopefully it doesn't... Eh, eh. Let me... Uh, yeah, let me fiddle with the window a little bit now that I see what's going on, okay? Let me fiddle with the window. So, X min, we don't really have to go that crazy. We can go negative 10, okay? Negative 10. That's negative 100. Delete. Negative 10. We'll go to uh, X max of, I don't know, 5. Should be fine. We'll scale it by 1. Y minimum, we'll go negative 10. And up here, it looks like we're going to go, maybe I'll go to 100, okay? Hopefully, that's not too crazy. And we'll scale that by 10 units or so. All right. Now, hit graph. There you go. Right? Here it is. Take a look. So, boom. Now, the graph, remember, the graph is just an output. It's just a coordinate system for every time you plug in this function in an X value. If X were 1, y is going to be a certain value. If x were 2, y is going to be a certain value. If x were 3, y is going to be a certain value. And it just so happens when you plot all those points, it turns into a shape that looks like this on a coordinate system where the horizontal is x and the vertical is y. That's all that is, okay? But if you look now, we notice that there's three locations where this function intersects the x-axis. Remember, each of these tick marks I said represents one unit. So if you count to the left, seven units, the x value of that point is going to be negative seven, and the y value is zero. We said that was going to be the case. Look, it intersects the origin there, right? So that's going to be zero comma zero. Isn't this beautiful? And then over here, it intersects the x-axis at positive one. And again, the y value is going to be zero, right? That's what we said. That's what we said algebraically. That's the beauty of algebra. You don't necessarily have to picture it, but I highly suggest you do get a feeling uh, of, some of, the, of some of the visuals because okay? I think that's what makes math really difficult, is that sometimes we rely on these rote, um, you know, methods, and we kind of lose sight of what the picture is. No pun intended, I guess. I don't know, is that a pun? Yeah, I don't really know. But that's why I do science and not English. Anyway, um, so that's it. That's how it looks visually, right? You can also check it in by using a table. Watch. Let me X out of that. Go to second. Now, table. Okay. And what you're going to be looking for, and I'm going to go up a little bit, okay? I have my table incremented by one, uh, so hopefully your table should be set for that as well. Um, if not, you can go to your table set and fiddle with it. But here, remember we define the x-intercepts to be the values of x where y was equal to zero. So there's three places where y is zero. And guess what? Here's one x-intercept of negative seven, boom. Here's another x-intercept of zero, boom. Here's another x-intercept of positive 1. Boom. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. Boom. I hope this really helps. Okay, And if it did, if you could boom the like button and boom the subscribe button, that would be great. And if you can boom your friends and tell them about our video, I'm not really, that that one didn't make sense. So forget about, forget about that one. Forget I said that. But if you could tell your friends about our channel, that'd be awesome. I really do appreciate it. Really, really. Um, and I do hope this helps a lot. Let me erase all this stuff so you can kind of see the beautiful picture of all the work again. And uh, there you have it, okay? Thanks again for tuning in. I look forward to helping you with more problems. Check out our channel, by the way. we got thousands of videos out there, not only in mathematics, physics, and chemistry as well. we got a whole lot of other stuff coming, ladies and gentlemen. A whole lot of stuff, okay? Stay tuned. Take care.